manages the systems and processes which look after the life cycle of Transgrid's assets. Andrew has been in the industry for 25 years, all of which have been wisely spent at Transgrid. In this time, he has worked across a range of design, project management and maintenance roles. Please join me in welcoming Andrew to the stage. Thanks very much. Let's get this turned on. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, clicker, and away we go. I'm here to talk to you today about asset management. And I'd like to start by saying uh, when I looked at the agenda, it was clear to me that I had the best topic on the agenda. And the reason I say this is as I look out there at the audience, I can say that you are all asset managers. If you've ever owned a car or own a car, you're an asset manager. If you've ever owned a house, you are an asset manager. If you're looking to get into the Sydney property market, you're an asset manager who's planning to acquire an asset to manage. And I wish you all the best with that. <laughs> so from this common base, I'd like to start off by talking about four particular points about how we view asset management at Transgrid uh, and what it means to us. The first one is that Transgrid delivers outcomes for consumers through its assets. Now, Lynn and Gerard have touched on what we do. Our purpose is providing a, a reliable and safe electricity supply in the most cost-effective and environmentally sustainable way. That outcome is achieved through our assets. And asset management is how we deliver that outcome. The second one is that asset management skills are at the core of our business. So talking about it in its simplest form, asset management is the way that we balance the competing requirements of cost, performance and risk and how we optimise those. Although asset management relies on documents, and systems and, and information, at the end of the day it comes down to people who are making good decisions about the assets. The third thing is that assets have a life cycle. They are planned, they are built, operated, maintained, and then either refurbished or replaced. When you're buying a car, you decide how much you're willing to spend and what performance you want. When you're running the car, you decide how you're going to look after it. Are you going to be proactive? Are you going to wait for it to break down? And at some stage, you'll come to the view that its performance is no longer acceptable and you'll look at replacing it or, or refurbishing it. Why are we talking about asset management when we're at the planning forum? Well, although our focus is on planning today and the Lynn has outlined the needs, the changing needs of our network going forward, asset management, best practice asset management, needs to consider the, the life cycle of the assets and we need to manage them effectively across their life. Now, whilst we can manage our cars or our houses, generally using common sense and perhaps a few simple tools, if we're looking to manage more complicated, expensive and potentially risky assets, we require a more systematic approach. Our asset management system is that set of documents, processes and controls that we use to deliver asset management objectives. <coughs> An overview of Transgrid's asset management system is shown in the following figure. And that's taken from uh, chapter four of the CAPA. What's really important is that asset management is about taking the corporate's, uh, corporation's plan and objectives, which incorporate what the owner wants out of the business, as well as what the stakeholders need. It translates those through strategies and optimizing strategies into work that's done on the assets. At the center of the asset management system is the assets themselves and the life cycle around those assets. Those assets are continually monitored uh, and maintained to ensure that the, and the associated risks are constantly assessed. And these risks drive any required investment on the existing assets. But what's really important to notice there is on the planning, on the life cycle circle, the planning and the renew, replace, life cycles are right butted up together. And that's why, partly why we're here today. It's so important to get that renewal and augmentation planning coordinated. The way that we do that in, in our asset management system is through the network investment process. 
It takes the needs that are identified across the different assets life cycles and it uh, justifies them, it prioritises them and it turns them into a list of capital projects to be delivered. Transgrid's asset management system has been developed over a number of years and is mature. It's delivered strong reliability, safety and cost outcomes over the long term. Some of those outcomes include the lowest unserved energy uh, costs of any TNSP in the NEM. We've managed the safety risks to the general public as low as reasonably practicable. We've consistently met our capital delivery program targets and we've consistently met or bettered the AR OPEX allowance. But despite that good performance, the asset management landscape is continually changing and asset managers across all industries are improving the way that they do their job. Most notable in recent years is the development of an international standard for asset management, ISO 55001. ISO 55001 was published in early 2014 by the International Standards Organisation after being developed over a number of years. Like the well-known quality environment and environmental standards, it sets out all the elements that are required for good practice asset management. Transgrid's asset management system meets the requirements for certification under ISO. This demonstrates the effectiveness of our system and uh, our asset management capabilities. And that's nice, that's pleasing. But the other important thing it does from our perspective is it sets a baseline for continued improvement in those areas that bring value to the business. So I'd now like to talk a little bit about our assets in more detail. Obviously, uh, lower recent levels of augmentation mean that the renew asset life cycle is currently the bulk of our capital expenditure. Renewal decision making needs to be carefully coordinated with the capacity planning part of the business. As we talked about, that's where those two phases in the life cycle come together. One of the strengths of Transgrid's asset management model is that within the same business, all of the life cycle decisions are being made. The renewal planning, um, the capacity planning specialists, the specialists who know the condition of the assets and how they're performing are in the same part of the business. And that uh, ensures that only required expenditure on new assets is delivered. In terms of asset age, obviously a growing number of our assets are approaching the end of their serviceable lives. A number are older than many of us here. And like people, Older assets can mean increasing health problems. Like us, some of our assets are looking pretty good for their age, while others perhaps less so. And I'll leave you to fit in where you fit in that analogy. But what can we do to keep them going as long as possible and then retire them in an orderly fashion, as we would all like? All condition-based risks associated with our assets are assessed at both an individual component level and at the system or site level. Those risk assessments include risks to safety, the environment, reliability and cost sustainability. Once we've identified those risks, what are the options? What can we do? Well, we could increase maintenance. We could spend a little bit more operating increase maintenance and monitoring and keep the asset going longer. We could decide to take a, a major refurbishment on the asset that extends its uh, expected life. Or it's possible that changing demand or network configurations mean that we could take that asset out of service without replacing it. Or even uh, alternatively, as Anthony will talk about, Sometimes the best option is not building a traditional network asset at all. It gets into the realms of non-network solutions. But it doesn't stop there as well. Once we've identified that risk and we do have to replace the asset, we've got to make the call. Are we replacing an individual asset at the component level or are we doing it as a wider scale replacement where it's efficient to do so? On to our major four asset types. Our substation assets, we've got around about 100 sites. Some of them date back to the 1950s. Substations are complex systems of interacting gear which have uh, varying component lifespans ranging from 
50 or 60 years for civil steelwork buildings to uh, shorter time frames for some of the monitoring equipment. Our asset replacement program will include individual replacements and wider scale replacements where that's effective. Our transmission line fleet, over 13,000 kilometres, over 36,000 structures, some of which are dating back to the 1940s. Some of the key condition issues that are being experienced with the transmission line fleet are steel tower corrosion, uh, wood pole condition, and transmission lines with spans lower than current Australian standards. Again, our capital program is tailored to address these risks as it's necessary. Underground cable assets, although they're relatively small in number and length, they are critical supplies to the CBD and inner Sydney. Emerging issues with cables are always focused around insulation, the condition of the insulation due to ageing or to other environmental external issues. Uh, cable joint condition and potential failures and the deterioration of tunnels, support structures and other associated systems. And lastly, but not leastly, secondary systems. So associated with our substations and high voltage assets, the secondary systems which protect, monitor and measure the output of the high voltage equipment. We have a range of different technologies and life uh, cycles with secondary systems. Some of our old electrical and mechanical relays are over 50 years old. Modern systems have a dependence on microprocessors and we've all had the experience of our computer uh, breaking down and we take it to the shop and they say, no, we can't sell you any parts for that anymore. So then I'd like to talk about a couple of our challenges that we face. Um, the first one is funding. So the recent decision by the Australian Energy Regulator was to reduce our capital funding for the years up to 2017-18 by 29%. This represents a substantial challenge to the business in ensuring that the historical outcomes in the area of safety and reliability can be achieved with less money. A reduction in funding will increase the risk of not meeting customer service levels. We are carefully managing our expenditure to minimise the increase in these risks. This includes rescoping and prioritising uh, key programs such as dynamic line ratings and low span remediation works. The other challenge I'd like to mention is efficiency and effectiveness. The regulatory and external environments are providing an increased focus on our ability to demonstrate efficiency and effectiveness in everything we do for the consumers of New South Wales. The development of our asset management system over a number of years and its recent certification are significant milestones in that journey. The AER funding decision itself is integral to the question of efficiencies as it drives the focus to mitigating short-term risks through targeted replacement programs, rather than taking the opportunity of reducing life cycle costs across regulatory periods by larger scale replacement where this has been determined to be efficient. So how do we respond to these challenges? Well, <laughs> asset management is a dynamic and changing discipline. As I talk to my peers across the electricity industry and others, it's clear that there are many businesses doing things well and many learnings to be had. So some of the things that, the key initiatives that we're working on that I'd like to talk about, we're looking at improving our data and analytics to help us understand the health of our assets. We're looking at improving risk management practices to enhance risk-based asset management. And that'll help us respond quickly to changing funding and developing more granular and targeted replacement programs. Maintaining certification is a key mean to ensure that our asset management system remains credible externally. We're also working to establish a formal asset monitoring centre, which will involve a specialised team having access around the clock to an expanded set of real-time data to coordinate and improve the efficient management of abnormal system conditions. The other thing that we, are, we think is very important is, is having a roadmap for continual improvement uh, and uh, being very committed to that. So as I close today, I ask you to think about what the future may hold for our assets. 
I don't know what the network will look like in 30 years, but through good asset management, I'm hoping that we can keep providing the services that people need. As for you guys in your asset management journey, Gerard's assured us that we're all going to be driving electric cars in 30 years. So I do hope that we're there to provide a reliable and cost-effective supply to charge them. Thanks very much. Thank you. We'll now take it to the floor for any questions. Good Andrew, Mike Tant from Jacobs Consultancy. How are you going? Um, I'm just curious about your line remediation program, in particular the fact that the AER uh, took quite exception to the amount of money you had in your proposal last year and, and used that as a basis for cutting back that expenditure proposal as and largely to inform of you about the rest of your expenditure proposal. How do you propose to go forward with aspects of that program in the light of that um, and be able to, su to substantiate that investment in a few years' time if the AR chooses to scrutinise it from looking backwards? Yep, no problem. So you're right. Um, our response is that the AR has given us the, uh, the, the funding envelope and that funding un envelope we're going to prioritise on the basis of risks as we see it. Uh, and so that will include how we optimise or uh, include the low span work ahead of other work depending on our perception of its risk. Hi, uh, my name is Martin Strainer from uh, Jacobs. Um, I got a question. Uh, I thought that uh, analogy with the car, being a car owner and uh, you know being an asset manager is very very nice. Because the one thing I'm struggling with is thinking, if uh, new um, EV electric vehicles are being introduced, what should I do? What is my strategy with uh, maintaining my current, obviously 